Replacing your motorcycle's drive chain is fairly straightforward business. Manufacturers recommend that you replace your drive chains every 20-24 thousand kilometers. This has been on for 36 thousand kilometers. I think I've got my money's worth out of it. You can do this at home. You don't need any chain special tools for this. In this video I'm gonna show you how you can save money and replace your own chain. The chain is gonna be fitted properly that's gonna be strong and durable and long-lasting without any special tools. Of course it's gonna take a little bit of time and fiddling and attention to detail just just as with everything but the tools I'm gonna to use are common easily found multi-purpose tools okay no special tools in this video now when you replace your motorcycles chain you also need to replace two sprockets with it one mounted on the transmission output shaft I'm just gonna call that engine sprocket the other one on the rear wheel the rear sprocket I'm just gonna call it wheel sprocket or rear sprocket so let me show you on the ground here I have laid out the items that you need all the tools and all the parts of course you're gonna need some kind of chain that you wanna fit on the motorcycle pick one get one buy one whatever you like and you're gonna need an engine sprocket it comes shipped this way because it's made of a type of steel that corrodes it's not stainless unless you wanna order stainless steel but they are soft so anyhow the teeth are soft on stainless steel anything here is the wheel sprocket so that goes to the rear wheel this goes to the front at the front I have removed these bolts and this cover here that used to be mounted right here very straightforward four bolts come out this needed an 8 millimeter socket for these small screws you're gonna need for this big socket in the middle or for this big nut in the middle a big socket in this case it's 28 millimeters but yours could be 30 32 but if you're working on this ninja it's gonna be 28 millimeters what you do need is this kind of thing for this is a chisel a cold chisel yes for the rear wheel what you're gonna need is on the ground here you're gonna need a grinder to grind off two pins on the chain very straightforward just to just the pin heads one and the other side by side you're gonna need two clamps and a block of steel or a block of aluminum that's gonna be your workbench you're gonna need a center punch oh no sorry a pin drive like this flat end yes to drive out the pins from the chain and you're gonna need a center punch to help form the rivet head for the new chain very straightforward and of course you need a hammer and of course you need a in this case 40 millimeter wrench that's gonna remove the bolts from the uh, rear sprocket now when you replace the rear sprocket you also need additional tools to pull out the axle so you're gonna need a 32 millimeter big socket here and a pair of pliers to pull this pin out and that's basically it on the rear wheel then the axle just slides out but before you take out the axle and before you do anything you have to loosen the bolts but before you loosen those bolts start with this one and make sure that you do have all the tools that you need absolutely all of them and this metal needs just a little bit so this is how everything is done on this bike everything is gonna be cold metal work okay except the grinding that's gonna be throwing some sparks I use the permanent marker to place a movement line both on the nut and on the axles and cover your ears put your earplugs on or earmuffs we're gonna be noisy nice so this came off in about 30 seconds for now though put it back on just loosely just just like so because you want to make sure 
that you can take the bolts off the rear wheel and uh, these I don't imagine they would need an impact gun but make sure you can take all of them off and just crack all of them loose just like so yeah just like so they're coming all right then the next thing that we do don't take any of these off just yet first thing we replace is the chain while this one is in place and the engine sprocket is in place and the old chain is gonna pull in the new chain so that it's through the swing arm there and through the frame at the front so that's why don't remove any of the nuts just yet next thing to do grab your grinder or a file you could file it it just takes forever or it, it takes longer grind off two of the rivet heads on the chain any two rivet heads well not any okay they have to be on the same link so this one and this one for example not this one with this one that doesn't help okay so this one has to be on the same link like so and you need of course your pin driver I really don't know what size okay I do know what size it is this one says 1 8 there so it has to be smaller than the diameter of the pin in the chain and it doesn't have to be super strong or anything just something nice that fits through the hole uh, this is gonna make sense in a sec so put your earmuff back on we're gonna grind just a few seconds there you don't have to grind off the whole link and uh, and if you just happen to cut into this it's not a problem because it's coming off but whatever you do don't cut into your own swing arm so you're gonna need to find where the I know it looks shiny that's how it looks I don't have any more visual detail on this one either you're gonna have to find the center of this it's fairly easy and tap out the link or the, the, the pin somewhere there roughly so a little bit of a trial and error but uh, that's how you break a chain with fairly minimal effort using hand tools there there I, there after a few taps you can see the circular outline of the rivet where it's gonna be so start blind roughly where it should be and then this is gonna shape up in a few taps Okay, I got more banging to do. There, I've removed this first plate using this cold chisel, and then this link just slides out, just like so. So now you can see how we're going to use this used link and that pin on it to pull in the new chain onto the old sprockets, both. And then, of course, this one is the throwaway part. So the new chain is out of the packaging, it's not golden or anything, I wanted the lightest and least expensive chain, especially with a strong focus on lightest in this case. So I have removed the connecting link that this one comes with and like I said this is gonna be riveted so even though it does come with a clip link and the clip can be applied into the groove this is gonna be riveted properly like so just like this one says that they strongly recommend riveting we are going to rivet this so to put it in place it's very straightforward connect the old one with the new one just like so and pull out the old put the bike in neutral that helps and I forgot to mention need to raise up the rear wheel with this highly sophisticated pine stick just like so so it's in the air there now we're going somewhere and just pull it in nice and slow just like this very straightforward Almost done. Almost done. There. 
we are around the first one, so I'm gonna disconnect the old one. We are around the engine sprocket, so this thing can come around, and as you can see, we are long, and that's good. So the chain needs to be shortened, and instead of counting the links, I recommend that you just lay it out exactly like this, so you see exactly where where to cut because there's more grinding to do right there okay i hope this makes sense yeah don't count it's not necessary now i didn't reposition the rear wheel in relation to you know fore and aft but if you want at this point you can see where it needs to be cut sure take out one more pin or whatever you like to move it forward but I don't like that's why that's why we have the waxy paper here right eh? so this doesn't just fall on the ground just like that I'm gonna put it in gear so it stops rotating there so that's why the paper is in place and that's also why we're using this old sprocket as a workbench due to the amount of banging and hammering that's gonna be the, the old sprocket is going to be subject to you're not taking a chance of bending the new sprocket okay so that's why this is the workbench with the block of aluminum and the clamps and we're going to form the rivet head right here after we grind off just one uh, pin there so i hope this one makes sense so like i said oh yeah you want you might want to move it forward but i usually don't like moving the axle forward because the longer the chain, the less strain it is under. Uh, because this is pivoting here between the, the swing arm pivot point right here. It's pivoting here as the suspension moves up and down. Um, the chain lengthens, that's why it needs some slack in it initially. And uh, the longer the chain, uh, the less severe this lengthening is i'll do a math video on that i'll crunch i'll crunch the numbers you'll see it's fairly straightforward so i'm gonna get rid of this and grind off here now with the old chain out of the way next thing to do is shorten the chain to appropriate size i uh, don't recommend that you start counting the link i recommend that you that you do this bend the chain where it has to go together and visualize it with the connecting link you see you can't remove this rivet here you have to grind out that one that makes sense to replace this entire thing yeah with just this one rivet try to keep it clean okay so i hope that geometry there makes sense and uh, you're gonna have to move the axle forward slightly for covering this distance which is in this case because it's a 520 chain starting with a number five so it's five eighths pitch length from center of the rivet to center of the rivet okay so i have to move this forward later coming up so first grinding so i have to grind out right here this pin okay I hope that makes sense that it's gonna the chain is gonna connect and link up this way when this pin is gonna go in there okay so very straightforward when you're grinding take your time obviously don't cut into your new chain anywhere else if you cut into this link it's it's okay because you have to grind this pin flush and uh, this link here is coming out anyhow going to be replaced by the connecting link yes and if you do make a mistake and cut into say uh, the chain somewhere just shorten it one more link if you cut into the sprocket not a problem this is the sacrificial old sprocket you can bend it you can damage it any way you like stay away from damaging the swing arm though so just a little tapping I've loosened the axle nut here and moved the adjustment bolt into the swing arm away from this axle so I can move it forward and join the chain. I strongly recommend, especially this, if the sun is going down or uh, it started raining right now, that you do finish 
riveting this chain together on this sacrificial block of uh, metal or you know the old sprocket before you replace the sprocket either that one or that one even though the front one can be replaced now the chain is around it just for time management sake I strongly recommend that you finish one thing that you started okay so this operation here is fairly straightforward the wheel needs to go forward like so and then this can jump there into the correct position very simple and this can hold everything together now now before it does so I do want to point out it needs, needs to be lubricated meticulously and thoroughly and this lubrication is inside this little pack or sachet depending on where you are so this is the lubricant or grease that you need it does have some printed instruction on this plastic but it's kind of difficult to read you also have four of these rubber O-links and one flat link that's going to be used for riveting so lubricate and for the o-rings you can see how they go one there one there one there and one there that's how the o-rings are and these o-rings need to be quite compressed with this link when this thing is assembled so let's get to work for this lubrication clean clean hands okay I I can't stress it enough because where the chain wears is precisely at these pins so the if this this pin dia this pins diameter shortens in use and that's why chains elongate they don't elongate because the steel stretches out or gives way or something chains elongate because the diameters of these pins wear all right so just take your time and this is some finicky work and you need the lubricant therefore on the pin not on the side wall not on the outside not anywhere else on the inside somewhat underneath these x-rings or o-rings or whatever design you're going with but most of it is needed on the pin just like this so that's good for one side there and then don't lose the o-rings put some more lubricant on it so it's gonna stick into it I see we've got more than enough lubricant for this stuff here. I've clamped up this block of aluminum to the chain now. This is my workbench. I, my clamp screw threads line up with one of the rivet heads so that any pressure exerted is along the rivet head so I'm not bending the plates, okay? Because that would be uh, retarded and counterproductive okay so that lines up as well except this one in the middle which is seems to be bending this plate but it's actually compressing the gaskets underneath okay until this plate is seated properly because we need enough excess metal here sticking out above and below to form the rivet heads so at one point this connecting link here is gonna snap into place you can check it if it's in place by checking out the thickness of let me just get this the thickness of the o-ring here that was factory riveted is now a matching thickness of this o-ring there okay it's it's reasonable let me just rotate it maybe this way there you can have a better look okay so now although uh, the top one is slightly more compressed than the bottom. I think I'm gonna just adjust this one with a few taps or something Now we can start forming the rivet head the pins end is going to be deformed to make this rivet head By just cold forming like this. This is done by cold forming at the factory by exerting force on this rivet head We're gonna do the same just slowly it's not going to damage the chain, it's not going to do anything wrong, 
don't bend this plate um, you're gonna be fine okay we're just gonna go little by little starting with the center punch deform it in the middle there and crater it out a little bit making it wider so that this link cannot pop out this way very straightforward so just as with any riveting displace metal at the rivet head looks like this now you know why there are those rect uh, square or rectangular little dimples in this aluminum block it's been used for this purpose a few times once you started displacing the metal, just round the rivet head off. Does not need extensive banging. Just like so. That's about it. Let's take a look. Doesn't look like the factory. And a little bit chipped off on the bottom I see but both of these will are deformed enough and will hold enough okay they are not nearly as geometric or beautiful as the factory but they will work after a little bit of I'm not done with the bottom the top one is getting there there that's how this looks like not nearly as beautiful as that one or that one it just works one last thing about the rivet head forming the stress or the forces acting on the chain is in the direction of the chain when you're accelerating or when you're decelerating it's still in the direction of the chain going that way so the force is acting perpendicular to the direction of the Pin. all of the pins are this way and the force is this way so there's very little force if any that would dislodge these pins sideways okay all of the force is that way perpendicular to the pins so these rivet heads don't need to be super beautiful in order to hold or super neatly formed okay so that's that's the last thing they should work and the distances here with the seals need to be set it should be properly seated okay but there is very little load on the rivet going this way all of the load is this way okay so there exists a different type of connecting link this one which I didn't have at the time of the chain installation I had to order this separately this did not come in the box this costs eight dollars fairly inexpensive hand riveting is done much easier and nicer and much more secure than what I did on the video so let me explain here the differences between this and what came in the package in the package the connecting link had pins which had a groove in them as the picture here shows towards the end and into those grooves this plate which is now somehow deformed I don't know how but this is why riveting is superior to connect to using this u-clip so into into that groove there in the picture this u-clip is fitted and uh, when the end of the pin was deformed it was deformed towards the groove already in the pin and because there is no support over the edges sometimes the edge or the displaced metal broke off chipped off or looks cracked this is not nice and and could potentially be problematic which is eliminated by using this connecting link this does not have a groove at the end even though the picture here is the same the these ones both match the type of chain we have so this is DID 520VX2 so this one is DID 520VX2FJ and this is 
VX2 ZJ or ZJ depending on where you live. So the ends of this connecting link doesn't have grooves in the pin. I don't want to take it out, I don't want to open it. I want to keep it with the motorcycle, under the seat or some such thing, so it's with the bike all the time. Because if the other one fails, I want to have a spare. So the difference is the obvious lack of grooves and if you look carefully there you can see that the end of the pin is hollow for a certain depth of the pin just about three millimeters or so well, let's pretend that's an eighth of an inch something like that I really don't want to open it but you get the idea that the ends of the pins are hollow what this one helps with is that since it doesn't have a groove and any displaced metal will just flare out like a bugle head or a trumpet head okay it's gonna if you put into this one a center punch that fills this pin space there before bottoming out once you tap on that center punch it's gonna displace the end enlarge it it's gonna flare it out like a bugle head thereby stopping this link from sliding this, this plate from sliding off okay I hope that makes sense so this is more secure than this one but uh, this one doesn't come with a kit uh, or it doesn't come with the chain I don't know why but so I'm gonna keep this one under the bike with a with a center punch that fits it just permanently under the seat and if I do need a hammer I can just grab a stone and make it work you know that's gonna be a hammer and in an emergency at a roadside if the chain does come loose or the or way before the chain flies away way before catastrophic failure you can see the plate loosening on the on the old one so that's why you should also keep an eye on it um, things don't fail suddenly especially this stuff which is made out of soft metal mild steel this metal is ductile enough so that it can deform visually way before it fails okay so that's my keep I'm keeping an eye on this one and there is a, a emergency solution right underneath the seat permanently so there's my proper tool for an emergency riveting that's how it looks like that's how it, that's how they match this could this could be this tool could be a little fatter but uh, it's close enough for now and everything lives in a ziploc bag because this tool compartment here isn't hmm, airtight and tool tight and whatever so everything goes together in a ziploc and then I need two hands to properly close it and then put the seat back on now I can remove the engine sprocket the old sprocket has been removed the new one should go on with just a little bit of fiddling I'm making good progress with tightening it you can see the movement lines almost line up but just before you put it back on don't forget you're gonna have to bend the tab back it's a fairly straightforward business just like so this is enough to hold it from rotating you can see the permanent marker lines line up so we're done at the front end done with riveting now the rear wheel can be removed this is also why the wax paper again is in place so the chain doesn't pick up the small stone grits that eventually destroy it and taking out the rear wheel or make sure that the brake is on the other side that it's not lying on the brake it's lying on rubber so removing this is super straightforward now and of course when you're done fitting the chain and the sprockets on and before you tighten the rear axle knob the next thing you need to do is align the rear wheel or better said align the sprockets the rear sprocket with the engine sprocket in this direction in the direction of the chain pull okay now even if I bend the chain guard out a little bit I know you can see the front sprocket from here the engine sprocket but this is I'm just this is just for demo this is the direction of the alignment I have a separate video just on that titled wheel alignment options type it into the search bar see what comes up 
you can either use these hash marks on the swing arm or uh, the manufacturer's markings where you can count the threads here on the adjustment bolt. You can use a tape measure or a straight edge or a string line or a, or a laser beam, just a straight laser light. You can use it for alignment so any one of those will work before you tighten the rear axle or not. Don't forget. And of course, once you're done fitting the chain, you should test it on a short test ride. For the lifetime of the chain, you should keep an eye on it and check it every so often. In this case, I am at 37,111 kilometer odometer reading at the moment. Let's take a look at some of the changes or deformation the chain underwent. Let's see some of the visible changes. So you can see that this was factory riveted. It has a square in the middle of the rivet and the edges of the rivets are deformed down towards the plate so this one here is factory made and so this is the one that got hand riveted it's still not beautiful you can see that this one lost all of all of its lubricant from it you can see the lost lubricant there but that was visible after only about say uh, the first 100 kilometers that all of the links at all of the pins lost some of the lubricant that they came with however what is critical other than good looks is as you can still see this is hand riveted right here you can see that the edge of it is cracking out but it's not lost what is critical is that the o-ring or o-rings both of these remain compressed so the thickness of the o-ring here I'm just kind of trying to put my fingernail in there should be the same as the thickness of the o-ring there as soon as this plate starts moving out in this direction that's the first sign of failure so this one is holding well and is holding parallel and like I said very little force is actually in this direction most of the force is in this direction either pull or push depending on what you do with the throttle so this one isn't beautiful but uh, obviously works after a few hundred kilometers I've just tested my chain riveting this link here was riveted at uh, over 100 miles an hour I think I did maybe 180 kilometers an hour at the most for extended periods of time and this is how it looks like it's in good condition I'm gonna rotate you sideways again so there is no distance here increasing or you know indicating that the chain link would open up and at the moment we have exactly I don't know let's have a look see that many kilometers on the odometer so it's being checked and an eye kept on it periodically every so often as it should it's holding together it's working flawlessly uh, some lubricant was lost from it at highway speeds which looks like I'll show you I don't know can you see this lost chain wax here on the inside of the chain guard there as it flings around and I'm sure there is more inside and and even more inside around the engine sprocket guard there and there might be some other stuff flung around that around this angle here let's see oh yeah I found it there is some more chain wax there on the turn signal there and some more on it so uh, yeah chain lubricant is being lost so that needs to be replaced there's more there on the plastic yeah so that's how it goes uh, chain assembly flawless it's working fantastically